Voice on Music. We are here. We're in the building. I am your host, Kenny Fulton. Uh, we have an exciting, exciting show, man. I am looking forward to this show here. Uh, what, what an amazing concept and, and what an amazing uh, just, just ideas that we have to flow and to vibe on with this particular show. So I, I can't wait to get into this. But first, I have to introduce, we have a special guest host with us today. We have China. and excited to have her on. So China, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again. Uh, awesome, Thanks. awesome. <laughs> good, good. So today we are talking about awakening possibility through your kind voice. One of the things that um, helped me with the title and the concept of this, of this show was uh, an amazing classical music enthusiast and orchestra conductor. His name is Benjamin Zander. He said, I quote, it is my job to awaken possibility. And he said, the way that you know that you have done that is through the shining eyes. He said, when you can see a shine in people's eyes, then you know that you have awakened possibility in them. And so we're going to talk today about how we do that by blending our kind voices together. So what I first want to do is I want to play a snippet from a show. We had a blues singer, and he had some great things to say about uh, putting together a song by a great blues artist, and he wanted to recreate the song, and he talked about how he was able to do that. So let's get into that right now. This is Bill Philippi. Right now we're talking with Bill Philippi. Uh, let's hear some music from this wonderful featured guest, this is Come On In My Kitchen. You better come on in my kitchen. It's gonna be grinning out though. Thank you. 
Well, that's uh, a Robert Johnson tune uh, that I arranged uh, slightly differently than uh, the original Robert version. When I started uh, playing Delta Blues, um, one of the promises that I made to myself that I broke was I was not going to play Robert Johnson. Because uh, similar to what I was talking about earlier about Blind Willie Johnson and how you know, these guys are like, that's it's perfect. Don't mess with it. Don't try to replicate it. Just enjoy it. You know, go make your own way. And um, but what I found was um, as I started building the repertoire and listening to different folks and, and figuring out what songs uh, what songs really like spoke to me that I wanted to play, there were so many great Robert Johnson songs that I just I was like, man, you got to figure out a way to play these tunes. Mm-hmm. And and so that song in particular was the first Robert Johnson song that I learned to play. And it took a really long time because if if you're familiar with Robert's original version, um, he plays slide on that, and 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 I don't play slide, and I you know I invested some time in trying to figure out if I wanted to do that, but I figured out that you know I it wasn't I I didn't I wasn't fluid enough at it and comfortable enough at it that I could speak with it like I wanted to, but I could do that with my just playing fretted, and so. Um, I took uh, this approach that um, this Chicago blues guy taught me, a um, guy named Steve Freud. Um, I could tell you stories about Steve Freud all day long. Be two another sh- two two whole shows on Steve Freud and how, <laughs> how badass Steve is. Um, but he taught me he taught me this um, this particular style of rhythm playing. It's called G position, where you're basically doing a G chord down at the open frets. Uh, or down at the at the nut, and by using kind of a piano player approach or a Mississippi John Hurt kind of thing, you pick out melody notes while you're thumping on this big fat G note at the bottom. And that when I when I took that approach to this Robert Johnson song, I found kind of like my way in to the Robert Johnson material. I found this like different way to go at it that wasn't you know, Eric Clapton playing Robert Johnson or John Hammond playing Robert Johnson or Robert Johnson playing Robert Johnson, Robert Johnson. but yeah. Bill but Bill Phillippe playing Robert Johnson. Cool. And and so um that's that's one of my favorite songs to play because like you said, I mean it's it's gritty, it's raw, it's there's that. there's so much sadness and sorrow in in those mm-hmm. lyrics. I mean, I just yeah, that's if you ask me what's what's an example of a blues song, that's a blues song. Mm-hmm. A lot of great information there uh from Bill Philippi. Um one of the things that I took from that that stuck out to me was he said that he made a promise to himself that he broke. <laughs> he said that he promised he would never play a Robert Johnson tune um because it was so pure and he, he he felt like to try to play it would be to uh, to taint it in a way. Um but then I love the fact that he said that he heard so many different tunes from Robert Johnson and realized, God, these are all so good, and I have to try to find a way to play them because he wanted to be an extension, if you will, of Robert Johnson. And, um, you know, this brings us to a point that I want to discuss, uh, China, is different places that we find our kind voice. And we see that it, it, Bill found his kind voice uh, in a lot of the Robert Johnson tunes and, you know, that he found a way to interpret his kind kind voice and he talks about you know bringing together these different um techniques and things that he had learned along the way to reinterpret um or to, I'm sorry to interpret his kind voice um you know in in this Robert Johnson tune so uh where where are some of the places uh China that you think and you can even use yourself you know as an example that people find uh their kind voice you know if it's in, in everyday things if it's in spiritual teachings other people's music uh, you know where are places that you think people find their kind voice well, I guess they some people I, they can start within actually. Um, 
finding their own type of voice within themselves, you know, just uh, within their everyday life um, and evaluating things that they do um, throughout a daily. And um, But it, it could be definitely different places that they've gone, um, you know, different uh, shows, uh, maybe even out to dinner, you know. It, it depends, you know. I guess the mood of that person where they can actually find their kind voice. It could be through someone else. It could be through a conversation um, or just simply, like I said, going going to a show. That's, 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 that's great. Um, and I, I, I totally agree, and, and I love the way you were saying, you know, especially when you said from within. I think that's one of the first places that, that we can look is uh, definitely within to find our kind voice. And you know, that brings me to another clip I want to take real quick, and then we're going to go into a break here. But I want to play a clip from uh, one of the shows that I had, one of the guests I had on his name was uh, Rick DeLozier, uh, an absolutely amazing guitarist. And uh, this is just a short, a short clip of something that he said that I found so profound. And he talks about finding that voice within. Let's hear that real quick. There are a few pieces on on the CD where I've sat down and said, uh, for instance, okay, I'm going to do something in a B Phrygian mode, talking about a scale. Uh, because I want this particular feel or this particular sound, and then you create from there. But it's it's kind of okay. like being an artist. I, I treat it the same way an artist treats a sketch or a painting. And I right. just you just have to let the instrument be the brush. And, yes. and what yes. comes what comes what comes out in the end is really a piece of your soul. But it it's, it starts from the brain, goes through the heart, comes through the hands, goes through the instrument, and goes to the wow. canvas. And that's the way I treat wow. it. Wow. Oh man, I, that is <laughs> that is off. That is amazing the way you describe that. I mean, just I, again, just hearing it again just gives me chill. Um, you know, China. He he said it starts in the brain, goes through the heart, comes through the fingers into the instrument, and then what comes out is a piece of your soul. I, I mean, just just give me give me a little bit of thought on that from from your perspective. Well, I think that's just simply amazing. He couldn't have uh, described that better. Um, I've never heard anyone describe music like that. Um, I mean, he described that to a T because that is exactly what, what a painter does, you know, from from their imagination to their hand to that paintbrush. When that paintbrush hits that paint to that paint hits that canvas and then you create a masterpiece. I mean, I've never heard anyone describe music like that. I think that is absolutely brilliant. I love that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yes. Brilliant is definitely a word to describe that. And to go back to awakening that possibility and the shining eyes, if you could have seen me at that moment, I definitely had shining eyes because it came out through my voice. You heard me go, wow. Ah! You heard this kind of gasp mm-hmm. in my breath, you know what I mean, as he was saying this because I definitely, um, definitely awakened some things in me. And that is uh, like we were talking about, finding that kind voice within and then allowing that to come out, you know, and sharing that because then what you're doing, in essence, is awakening possibility in others. Oh, yes, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. More kind voice on music, more awakening possibilities to our kind voice. Hi, I'm Claire Bloom, and I started N68 Hours of Hunger to put bags of food in the hands of local children who have little or nothing to eat for the 68 hours between the free lunch they get in school on Friday and the free breakfast they get in school on Monday. Our vision is to end childhood hunger in America one school at a time, and that's how we operate. We start programs wherever we have two volunteers in a community who are prepared to step up and take responsibility for running the program, and we grow from there. Today, we're feeding 900 children each weekend in 29 communities, and we're growing. If you're interested in starting a program in your community, please visit our website at www.n68hoursofhunger.org and click on the tab at the top of the page that says FAQ. Everything you need to know about starting a program is there, including videos on how to talk with groups, how to set up your space, and even what kind of food to include in the bags. Feel free to reach out to me at n68hoursofhunger at gmail.com. A kind voice radio. We're back with a kind voice on music talking about awakening possibility through our kind voices. I have a special guest host with me today, China, 
and she is adding her kind voice to the conversation today, and uh, we're just discussing some some awesome ideas and, and awesome concepts here, and this is what I, I love to do, uh, is just to, to have a great conversation, and I think possibility comes out of every conversation, and, and I think it's just an amazing thing, and another thing that I, I took, we, we played a snippet from Bill Philippi, and uh, he played this awesome uh, Robert Johnson tune called Come Into My Kitchen, and he talked about how he was able to create his own rendition or own version of that song based on uh, Robert Johnson's tune and uh, a few techniques that he learned along the way. And that brings me to a point I want to discuss, and that point is collaboration. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, we, we also played the snip of Rick DeLoge, and he's talking about, you know, this beginning of the brain going through the heart, the fingers into the instrument, uh, and then, you know, you've got this piece of your soul. And I think another way that, that we can uh, awaken possibility in others to bring out the music is um, by combining our kind voices. And we do that through collaboration. And um, we oftentimes, we think of collaboration as, um, you know, especially in music, we think of, you know, two or more people uh, on the same song at the same time. You know, you think about, you know, a singer and a rapper come together, well, that's a collaboration. You think about a duet, uh, two singers, you know, whether male, male and female, that's a collaboration. Um, you know, so we think about it that way. However, when we think about it, I think collaboration is actually larger than that. I think every song in essence, is a collaboration because what you're doing is you have someone that creates the music, you have someone that writes the song, and if you have someone separate that even sings the song, that in itself is a collaboration. I think we haven't looked at collaboration on that broader scale. It's think of it like a recipe. You know, think about your baking a cake. You have to have your flour, your sugar, your milk, your eggs, your you know your vanilla extract, lemon extract, and you, you mix all these things together, and in the end, what you get is this awesome cake. You know, um, whereas music I think it's more uh, liquid. It's, it's more fluid, if you will. Um, so let's think of music as a smoothie. Let's, let's think of music as a cake. Let's think of it as a smoothie. You take these different fruits. I, I, hate, I hate you laughing. <laughs> You have, you, have, you have these different fruits. You have your strawberries, your bananas, you have, you know, your mangoes and your grapes, and different things, and you bring them all together, and then what comes out is, you know, this delicious drink, you know what I mean? And I think music is in, is in that manner, you know what I mean? Um, just think about what Bill Phillippe said. So he took this Robert Johnson tune, and then he... Uh, he wanted to play it, but, you know, he talked about how Robert Johnson played it on a, on a different instrument. He played the slide guitar and not the fretted guitar. And, you know, mm-hmm. this gentleman who plays the fretted guitar wanted to play it, but wasn't sure he would be able to get, get the same sound out of it. So then he took a technique that someone taught him, you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. then took another technique that he had heard or learned and brought this all together. And I love what he said. He said, and when I came out with my finished product, he said it wasn't Clapton playing uh, Ro- uh, Robert Johnson. He said it wasn't this other person playing Robert Johnson. It wasn't even Robert Johnson playing Robert Johnson, but it was Bill right. Phillippe playing Robert Johnson. So, you know, he took all of these things together, but what he created was a unique and singular uh, piece, but it came from all these different pieces. Uh, go ahead, Sean. I, 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 tell, tell me what, what you think about that. Go ahead. Um, although he admired uh, Robert Johnson, he still wanted to put his own flavor to it, um, his own uniqueness to it. And within him honoring Robert Johnson, although he didn't want to totally create the same thing that he did, um, he wanted to add his own uniqueness, his own his own flavor, his own story, if you will, to to his, his masterpiece. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, and that, that also brings me to another point. Um, I had an opportunity to listen to um, a producer who I am now a huge fan of. His name is Mark Ronson. Uh, Mark Ronson has been uh, in the music for quite some time, and I saw him on another uh, TED Talks um, episode on YouTube, and he was talking about uh, samples. And he was talking about how a lot of people feel like sampling has uh, ruined the 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 purity of music because now what you're doing is you're taking something that someone else has done and you're putting it in your music. They, he also said that uh, people have said that that, that uh, shows a lack of creativity when you're going to use somebody else's uh, music and somebody else's idea and concept. But what he showed was a different angle of it and how sampling is actually a tip of the hat, if you will, to the original creator of the music. And, China, you made a great point about how you were talking about Bill Phillips and, you know, how he wanted to pay homage, if you will, to Robert mm-hmm. Johnson, how he um, 
respected him so much because, again, he talked about not even wanting to touch the music originally, you know, but felt right. like it needed to be shared, you know what I mean? So he respected him so much in, in a sense that you said, you know, he wanted to create his own masterpiece with using, you know, Robert Johnson's tune. And, and I feel that way about sampling. I think, again, it's on a broader scale of collaboration because here now you're taking something that someone has created, you're putting your own spin or your own uh, idea to it, adding your own kind voice to it, creating your mm-hmm. masterpiece, however you may be using some of what someone else does. And But, but like you said, I, I still believe that it's more paying homage to that person than stealing it or, you know what I mean, or using it for your own gain or anything like that. And that, again, hey, we're, we're talking about awakening possibility here. And I think that, you know, when you're talking about collaboration, you, you again, are creating a possibility of something new. There may be nothing new under the sun in the sense of a particular sound or a particular song or lyrics. However, I think every time something is sampled or something is collaborated in a, in a new song that you have created a new idea and you have created a new possibility for someone to share their kind ways. I like to call it the what if factor. And that takes me into, um, I want to play a snippet from our very first show. And uh, we had a gentleman on who did a song called What If. And it's, 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 it sounds like a love song when you hear it. He's talking about, you know, what if I came by and what if we did this, what if we did that. But I want you to think about the possibility in the words what if. Okay, let's play that right now. Hello, welcome to A Kind Voice Radio on Music. My name is Bruce Grammel, and I'm excited to be with you here today. Uh, right now, I would like to play a little music for you. And the song that, that I'm going to play is uh, by my good friend, my good Buffalo friend, Pete Kramer. And the name of the song is What If.
if I came over, would you let me in? That was What If by Pete Kramer, and he's a wonderful songwriter from Buffalo, New York, and my friend. And through the magic of radio, Pete just happens to have called in and is on the line with us. Hello, Pete. Bruce Almighty, how are you? Hey, there he is. There he is. You're going to be my savior today, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Some of you that are listening out there are going to fully realize that I am not a talk show host, but the way I look at things, you're not anything until you try for the first time, so... And Pete, I'm glad to have you with me. Fantastic job, sir. Let me put my boots on. <laughs> You're being very kind, Pete, and that's what we're here for, a kind boy. So I appreciate appreciate your kind words. So let's talk well, a little bit about you, enough about me. <laughs> uh, what, what, what an awesome thing. Uh, the, the song itself was great, but and, and I want to talk about definitely uh, the what if and the possibilities that come out of that. But one of the things that I want, to point out it, that falls right in line with what we're talking about here is how uh, you, you could tell that Bruce was a little uh, nervous. Um, you know what I mean? Even when he came on, you know, you could hear the shakiness in his voice. And, you know, then right. when the song was over, he even says, you know, uh, you know, Pete, you're going you're to be my savior. You know what I mean? Then, um, you know, Pete comes right in, Bruce Almighty, you know what I mean? And he, he immediately um, begins to calm uh, Bruce down, you know what I mean, by using – his kind voice, and, and and Bruce even says that. You know, he says, you know, your your, your kindness is appreciated, and that, that's what we're here for. You know what I mean? So, you know, again, here is a, an amazing opportunity and, and something uh, that happened on our very first show, which pretty much set the tone for everything else that we do now, uh, kind voices com- coming together, um, Bruce accepting the call, you know what I mean, to uh, be the, the, the pioneer, to be the first one to come on and to begin to allow people to share their kind voices through all of his nervousness. Now, something else I love that he said was, um, you're never anything until you do it for the first time. Uh, amazing. You know, so many of us say, well, I'm not that. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I can't do that. That's, that's not what I do. You know what I mean? But you'll never know until you try it for the first time. And part of that, we'll be right back. We're going to pause for our good news report. <laughs> This is Brandon Sher with your Good News Report, a place where we deliver happy and exciting news from all over the world. This week, I went in search of a very heartwarming story and found quite a unique piece from New Mexico. Basically, a woman from New Mexico was engaged and all set to get married, but unfortunately, for personal reasons, the engagement did not work out. Where the interesting part of the story comes in is that instead of selling the $2,100 diamond ring, the woman chose to find a deserving couple instead to gift it to. She said in a written statement, quote, I didn't want it to become another pawn shop ring. For me, it was a symbol of love and happiness. After dozens of people submitted stories and pictures to the woman on Facebook, she chose Josh Michaels for the gift, who was diagnosed with a rare form of stage 4 cancer. The couple had a very special message for the woman. I would really like to take her out to lunch or something, just to meet her. And I'm sure there's a crazy story behind it. And maybe we can share each other's crazy stories and make friends out of it. Just thank you, you know, I appreciate it. This is definitely a story with a very remarkable twist since the anonymous woman chose to give something so special from her life to another individual in need. The ring will definitely be a symbol of a stranger's kind voice and kind heart, as well as a symbol for the love between Josh and his girlfriend, soon-to-be wife, Laura. This week's quote comes from Steve Jobs. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know what you truly want to become. 
Thank you to everyone for listening to this report, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day and continue to use your kind voice to make the world a better place for everyone. Bye, guys. The Kind Voice Radio. Welcome back to A Kind Voice on Music. You know, our show is part of the larger mission of A Kind Voice, and that is to make our world a better, more connected place. And we accomplish that uh, one conversation at a time. And in order to do that, we need more and more voices joining the conversation. We need voices like you joining this conversation. So if you see something good or if you're a part of some good news should be shared during that good news report, listen, I want you to go to www.akindvoice.org slash news and share that with us. I mean, I truly love those good news reports. I love the quotes at the end. I'm a person that loves great quotes from great people. Um, so, China, let's, let's talk about something that you and I, I do believe we're both familiar with and others that are listening could be as well. It's um, a concept called The Shed. Um, and um, The Shed is a place where musicians come together and they just jam. Uh, one of the things one of the uh, things I love in music are jam sessions. I have had the, and I'm sure you have China as well, the, the pleasure of being in a jam session, uh, in these closed sessions. And what I love about them is a lot of times they're in some of the most uh, unrecognizable places, uh, you know what I mean? Just, just you know, just, it might be a hole in the wall or something. You know, this is a place that you would not <laughs> expect for there to be some of the hottest musicians around, and all they're doing is they're together, and it starts with a single sound. Um, it starts with someone just playing one thing, and then everybody just starts coming in together um, and creating this musical garden or tapestry if you will, mm-hmm. of, of colorful sound, um, just just coming together and just creating a masterpiece. And what I love about it is unless you record it, it can never be duplicated. You know what I mean? You know, and, and uh, also, sometimes I think that's amazing. Go ahead. Setting feel almost, and it almost feels sacred <laughs> in a way, you know, because ah, yes. like a, a shed sometimes is, just by word of mouth, like there's no flyer, there's no no radio, uh, uh, you know, advertisement. It's just word of mouth, and sometimes it feels sacred, like you're part of this sacred community that has come together to jam. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I I definitely un- understand that. You know what I mean? And you know, it's just uh, it, it's just an awesome thing. You know what I mean? To to watch this unfold. Um, as musicians, we come together to create this garden, uh, to create this amazing um this this amazing tapestry, you know what I mean, of loving sound. And I'm saying that because I want to get into another song here. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Joshua Rich uh wrote a song actually for our show, for Kind Voice on Music, and it's called The Tapestry of Loving Sound and he talks about us coming together. Um, as one, creating this one masterpiece, blending all of our talents, blending our sounds, blending our voices together, and creating this beautiful master, masterpiece, excuse me, tapestry of loving sound. This is Joshua Rich. Here in our garden, we gather, share all that's inside of us. How much we care Find strength in our differences And reach common ground Celebrate our unity In a tapestry of loving sound Make a kind choice With your kind voice Find our kind voices inside, which sing out in unity, creating community and bringing us together as one. Choice that was wrong. Some 
of us be children Somehow people in need And all of us in our own way Are planting a loving seed Make a kind choice With our kind voice And united we find Our kind voices which sing out in unity, creating community, and bringing us together. become one of my favorite songs, uh, Tapestry of Loving Sound by Joshua Rich. Uh, a few things that he said in the song, uh, he said, you know, that we all do different things. It's, some of us sing songs, some of us feed children, some of us have people in need. Um, and I think one of the m most important things about sharing our kind voice is the ability to recognize someone in need. Um, I, I often comment about a lot of people just walk around I believe with their heads down, uh, with blinders on, not um, really recognizing uh, the need in people for a kind voice. I, there's opportunities, there's possibilities all around us to share our kind voice every day. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, and I think, you know, we, we have to be able to, to recognize the need in people. And then he went on to say, uh, Joshua Rich went on to say in the song, you know, we, we have people in need, and he said that we all, everything that we do plants a seed. And we need to understand what, what the possibility, here we go again, the possibility in a seed. Let me think about how small a seed is. Your kind voice does not have to be that big. Just think about how small a seed is and what a seed creates. You plant the seed. Uh, you nurture the seed through feeding it, watering it. You allow the sun's energy to get to the seed. You know what I mean? We, we need to be able to reflect the sun you know what I mean, and the sun's energy into our kind voice and the seed that we plant and nurture that and think about the life that is created from a seed, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, we can we can use this with music, you know what I mean? It starts with a seed. We can go back to the shed, that first sound, that first chord, that first note that's played is a seed that is planted, and then we all come together. We put our energy, there's the sun. We put our energy into it. We put our time, there's the nurturing into it, and we've now created new life. We've created new music through our kind voice. That is the essence of our existence, people. That's, that's what we are here for is to share that kind voice, to plant that seed, and to create.
create new life. You need to ask yourself, and I feel like I'm closing the show, and I'm not even, we've got to get to another break here, and I have one more piece that I want to share with you. Um, but I want you to think about this. What are you creating? You know what I mean? Let's go back to the shining eyes. I can go back to what Benjamin Zander said when he talked about awakening possibility. He said, if you're not seeing shining eyes and the people that you are touching, what you think you are touching, you need to ask yourself, who am I becoming? Who am I being right now that I am not bringing about the shining eyes in the people that I am touching? So we need to think about that. And we're going to take one last break, and I have another piece that I want to share with you um, that talks about um, that what we're creating is not what it even is going to be yet. So we're going to talk about that. Let's take one more break. We'll be right back with a kind voice. On. In high school, Schiffer Mincer wanted to do a little something for the homeless. So when she visited them, she brought her needle and thread. Can I fix that for you? Soon she was sewing anything that could be sewn. Thank you, young lady. Thank you so much. And Schiffer's little something became a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since all my buttons matched. Some people may say, so what can I do? But Chef Remenser says, so that's what I do. Volunteering. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at Values.com. Kind Voice Radio. We're back. We're still here. Kind Voice on Music. You're still here. Thank you so much for sticking with this. I'm, I'm having a ball. China, are you, are you having as much fun as I am? I am. Yes, I am. Thank you again for having me on. Oh, of course, of course. I I, I was just uh, <laughs> just talking to China a little off off air there, and I was saying that um I went in a little bit there <laughs> on that last piece, uh, I, and just um was just feeling inspired to say that. I just began to think about you know um, when, I, when I thought about the the the, the to recognize a need, um, it, it was just I don't know. I think about people we pass every day. You know what I mean? And uh, we, we all pass someone somewhere. Uh, wh whether you're driving in, um, I kind of have to appreciate the fact more that I travel to work by public transportation. And I have to appreciate more the people that I see. You know what I mean? And you just never know. And I say this all the time. You never know what someone is going through and what someone may need at that moment. And uh, Chan and I laugh a lot of times because we feel like um, – uh, we, we've said to one another at times, uh, people love to talk to us. We feel like, um, you know, we, we must have that face. Um, you know, we, we, we must have a certain look about us. And, and it, it happens everywhere, every time, everywhere we go. Um, you know what I mean? Someone walks up and they strike up a conversation and, you know what I mean, out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, um, I, my mother has said it. I know other people have said it. And you just feel like you present a certain face because some people don't. You see people walk all the time and they, they have this uh, standing evil face. You know what I mean? And you just feel like, ooh, I better not say anything to them. And I think some people do that because they don't want to be approached. They don't want to be talked to. So they put on this mask of a face that says, don't talk to me, you know what I mean, don't communicate with me. But I think we have to be open, you know what I mean, um, because yeah. that, that gives us an opportunity. It creates a possibility, you know, for someone to uh, speak to us who, who may just need to receive our kind voice. Okay, China, what, what do you have to say about that? Oh, absolutely. Because um, you never know, um, even though they might have that look or that evil look that you say um sometimes you approaching that person and just smile you might not even say anything but sometimes a smile can go a long way um or just a simple hello and hello can brighten someone's day because you you know you'd be surprised how some people are lonely and they really don't have someone to talk to but if you're like walking the street or something and just a simple hello is just kind, you know, and you never know how far that hello can go because you say hello to someone who maybe is having a, a bad morning or something, but by the afternoon or something, they're smiling, they're actually saying hello to someone else, brightening their day. So you, you just never know. Sometimes just a simple, that simple hello and hi and, you know, how's your day, you know, kind of uh, approach. And, and, you know, I, I said something um a couple of weeks ago. Here's a here's a here's a quote. Good good quote coming for those of you who like to to speak quotes. <laughs> here's here's one to write down from from yours truly. I, I said that you can never underestimate the currency of kindness. I, I started thinking about this again. I'm going to go back to the garden that we're creating and how things grow. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? Uh, you, you plant a tree, and that tree is going to 
um, grow different branches, and those branches are going to grow branches and leaves, and you know what I mean. And so then you start to create a larger thing, and you know it, it starts again with that single seed. And you have to understand currency. You know what I mean, currency. You know, money is our currency, and um, you know, currency comes from the root current, which means that it flows, it moves, it circulates. You know what I mean? So, you know, the, a dollar that you use to, you know, buy this cup of coffee or whatever, you know, in essence is going to end up in someone else's hands who in essence is going to purchase something else later on. You know what I mean? And that dollar may even end up back in your hands at some point. So that's currency. And we have to understand that kindness is the same way. That kindness that you share with someone, they may in turn share with someone else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it will continue to uh, flow in this currency will continue to, I'm sorry, flow in this current. It will co- continue to move, and eventually that kindness will come back to you. And that's why I said you can never underestimate the currency of kindness because we continue to create this garden. And what's, what's awesome about this garden is it is not truly what it's going to be yet. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 it hasn't reached its peak yet. Uh, we're, we're still creating it. And that brings me to uh, the final piece that I want to play. Uh, which is a guest that I had on by the name of Jensen Mentor Cox, an amazing spoken word artist from uh, the, the Miami area in Florida uh, that I met through another mutual friend. And um, he has a great album out right now called uh, Red, Red Blue Pill. It's a two disc set of some of uh, his great uh, spoken word pieces. And he did a piece called uh, Transform. And I actually used it as the intro to my show. I came on and I went right into it. So this is me talking about uh, introducing the song and bringing it in. And then we're going to hear this piece by Jensen Mentor Cox called Transform. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then we're going to close out. We thank you so much for hanging with us here on A Kind Voice. This has been a great show, an amazing show. And uh, let's go ahead and hear that right now. This is me introducing Jensen and his song Transform. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of A Kind Voice on Music. I'm your host, Kenny Fulton. I'm so glad you've taken the time out to join us once again for another amazing show with another amazing guest. You know, I tell you guys all the time, I love what I do. I love music. I love every aspect of it. So I took the time today because I wanted to I wanted to explain a few things to you today about our guest. And so I took the time today to, I wanted to define music. I wanted to look up the definition of music. Music can be defined as an art of sound in time that expresses ideas and emotions in significant forms through the elements of rhythm, melody, harmony, and color. I say that today because my guest is not a, a singer by right. He, he's not a musician by right other than using the instrument of his vocal cords. Um, he, he is a spoken word artist. And, you know, so I, I brought him on today because he has some amazing tracks. He has some amazing messages in his music. You know, and yes, it is music. I call it music because according to the way music is defined, you know, it's just using sounds, you know, using color, using rhythms, you know, anything that, that we use that will bring about a certain feeling I consider to be music. So, you know, some of the tracks that we're going to play today have music backing him in his spoken word and some don't. But whether they have, you know, musical instruments backing them up or harmony or melody, I still consider it music because he's bringing about a, uh, a great message and he's, and, he's, and he's bringing about a certain feeling in us. And that, to me, is what defines music. So uh, I have this awesome gentleman on. His name is Jensen Mentor Cox. Uh, I want you guys to hear something from him. The song is called Transform. I'm a poet. Poetry's transforming me, right? I'm a poet. Poetry's transforming me, right? I'm not even who I am yet. And in the grand scheme of things, I can finally catch my dreams from a destiny of a plan set. It was written like hieroglyphics in the clouds. To be more specific, I couldn't decipher the codes. My insecurities were too loud. But at some point, my innocence cannot be forgiven like an adolescent child. See, I won't be young forever. And learning on the fly signifies to never say never in this cold world, butt naked without a sweater. I didn't know much about the struggles of a legitimate go-getter. I had to take baby steps before I can walk in my destiny. The whole time, though, it was another set of footprints in the sand walking next to me. 
So after years of frustration and temptation getting the best of me and procrastination and stints of incarceration getting the rest of me, it was hard to see or comprehend that this was just a test for me. Old people, places, and things is a pretty stagnant recipe, but the beauty in learning how to cook is you can always change the ingredients. Every time I stay obedient to discipline, a certain level of amazing kicks in. Call it the transformation from Jensen to mentor. The challenge was to get both of them on one accord. Silly of me to think that I can do that without incorporating the Lord. It was the one missing ingredient that I didn't have before. The birth of this poet emerged from homelessness, jail time, and addiction. Washing away my sins and hanging them on a crucifixion. Somebody nailed my microphone, a pen and paper to my hands without permission. Mission. Then I use that blood dripping down the zinc to make a whole nation listen. Listen! I'm not even who I am yet. Still trying to remember things I promise not to forget. Red or blue pill, I ain't decided yet. Truth and illusion ain't collided yet. Hard to look forward to the future while staring at the sutures. Trying to forget the pain, but the scars remain. You know the uglier the oyster, the prettier the pearl. So when you see a pretty girl, know she's been through hell. They say big girls don't cry, but I stayed with Kleenex. Rose from the ashes called me the phoenix. I done came a long way from a suicidal teen. Turned those nightmares to dreams. I'm bursting at the seams. I've outgrown these statistics, and I'm over quick fixes. So I write these poems with the conviction of scriptures. I'm hungry, and it's dinner time. I'm a feline turned canine. I'm liberating minds like poetry did mine. I live through these lines. I'm a lioness in a lion's den. I got a life sentence. I'm forever with this pen. So tell them I'm guilty. Beautiful things grow from dirt. My past is filthy. So imagine when mentor says I'm a mentor. This is what the struggle was meant for. I go the distance like I was sent for. I was born to transform. It may rain when I brainstorm. It may rain when I brainstorm. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Transform. Man, listen, I want to ask you a question, man. When did you first fall in love with spoken word? I fell in love with spoken word poetry when I walked into the Literary Cafe and Poetry Lounge back in 2008. I met a guy by the name of Will, the real one, and he um, he inspired me, man, just by everything that he was doing there. And I, I started off rapping. You know, I thought I was a rapper. And what I learned about poetry is okay. that it has a lot more substance and creativity, and, and it's more in-depth because a lot of the rap music today um, is lacking that substance. So I gravitated toward poetry then, back in 2008, and uh, okay. the rest was history. I hear that. That was uh, just an, an amazing piece once once again. And uh, I want to point you to one of the parts that uh, in the piece that Jensen said, he started talking about a lot of things that he had been through. Uh, he said that, that he was um, birthed from homelessness and uh, being in jail and drug addiction and different things like that. And, you know, all of those things, all these, all the experiences he had been through uh, were seeds <laughs> planted uh, to, to create what, what he is today. Um, he would not be. Um, what he is today or what he's becoming um, because he talks about I am not I'm even I'm not even what I am yet I mean that's just that, that's that's just awesome it's that to, to wrap your head around that I'm I am not even what I am yet you know what I mean a lot mm-hmm. of us need to begin to, to say that you know where you are right now is not the finish line you know what I mean just as everything that we discussed today you know what I mean um coming together is bringing our kind voice together creating this garden creating these things and how none of that is finished yet. And, you know, I want my listeners to understand that where you are is not your finish line yet. You know, um, you're still planting seeds. There are certain things that you're dealing with now that are still planting seeds to who you really are. You know what I mean? Who you are becoming. I thought that was awesome uh, what Jensen said in that, you know, that, um, you know, uh, that he was birthed through the things that he had been through. Those, those things have become seeds that, that are building him into uh, what, what, what he is becoming. And what, what, what an awesome awesome piece. China, I want you to give uh, some final words. I want you to give some insight on that, that who you are. Uh, is, uh, you're not even who you are yet. I want you to give some insight on that. And, you know, just some final words here to our listeners. 
first, I just want to say that I think that was great of him for not allowing his past to dictate his future, that he was still able to move forward from coming from uh, homelessness. And um, I commend him on that for pursuing his dream. Um, I just think that you should always pursue your dream, even though someone may say, oh, you can't do it, uh, that's not for you, or uh, you're not great at that. You know, don't let people's words uh, dictate your future. Always pull from within yourself. You know your abilities. You know the things that you can do. You know your dreams and, and uh, aspirations. And so don't allow uh, people to uh, stop you from pursuing your dreams and your creativity um, because you know what you have. You know what you would like to share with the world. And just don't let anyone uh, tell you that you can't. Can't is not an option. Just know that you can and you can do and you can achieve and you can become who you want to be and who other people think you can be. So never, never say never (laughs) and that you can't. You can. You can always do. And just follow your dreams. That's awesome. That that that's that's awesome. There's there's a kind voice right there, guys, uh, speaking you know into your life, um, giving you awakening that possibility. I, I hope that we have awakened possibility t- today. I hope that we have created some shining eyes today uh, because it's definitely what we have set out to do. It's definitely uh, who we are and what we do here at a kind voice. Um, I just want to piggyback off of what China said. You know, um, there there is there is no can't with you. Um, I, I please understand, you know, what the if you take nothing else from this, understand that, you know, that I like I'm glad that we saved this piece for last, that you aren't even what you are yet. I, I need you to keep saying that I am not even what I am yet. You know, just just keep saying, get up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not even what I am yet. Understand that there is something greater for you. You know what I mean? And but but along the way, here's the thing. Don't wait until you reach that to start sharing your kind voice. You know what I mean? Along the way, because, again, kindness is currency. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so remember that. You know what I mean? That as you share your kind voice, speak into someone's life. You know what I mean? Out there, you know, as, as you travel along, as you go about, you know, share something kind with someone and, and understand that it will come back to you. You know what I mean? And it will build you just like you have built someone else. It will it will plant a seed in you just like you have planted a seed in someone else. It will grow you just like you have grown someone else. Um, you know, let's remember what Bruce said, you know, on our very first show, you know, because he said, you know, you'll hear, you know, as I'm talking that I am not a radio show host, he said, but, you know, but you'll never be anything until you try it for the first time. So try something new. You know what I mean? Try something that you always wanted to try. Think about what uh, Bill Phillips did. How at first he, he never wanted to touch a Robert Johnson track. You know what I mean? I'll never do that because it's way too pure. But then the more he heard, he said, wow, I have to try one of these. You know what I mean? So he stepped out and he did it. You know, think about if Bill Phillips had never tried, you know what I mean, a Robert Johnson track. Think about if uh, Bill Gates had never tried, you know what I mean, to begin anything, to begin Microsoft. Think about Steve Jobs if he had never tried to begin Apple. You know, this this thing about people who have would have never tried what they are today. You know what I mean? These CEOs, these these multimillionaires, if they had never tried to do what they are today. Just think about how different the world would be. Think about what the world is waiting on for you to do and begin to do it so that you too can share your kind voice and awaken possibility in others. China, I want to thank you for joining yeah. us today. You know, you've been an awesome seed today to this amazing garden that we're growing, and I want to thank you for sharing your kind voice with us today. Thank you. And I just wanted to say a little funny is something that my mother would always say, and she would always say that share is fair. So if you always want to share your music, your your craft, it's always fair. So that was just a little funny I wanted to say. Sharing is fair. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Sharing is fair, guys. So share it today. Uh, thank you again, China. I want to thank a kind voice for giving me this platform once again uh, to, to share with you guys. And um, today, share your kindness. Awaken that possibility. Awaken those shining eyes. We'll talk to you next time on A Kind Voice on Music. So
culture, how's your day? Come take my arm, let's walk and think away. 